It's good to come into the house of the Lord to worship him in Jesus' name, isn't it? So I have a question to start our time together. Have you ever been broke or nearly broke? Some of you are saying, yeah, I've been there, done that. It's a whole lot more pleasurable to have money in your pocket than be broke, isn't it? It was the third year at the close of our third year in college when I reached into my pocket and there was more lint than anything else down in the bottom of my pocket. And the reason that I was checking it out as I pulled out the coins and I opened my wallet, there was $13.27. Now, $13.27 went further when 30, gas was 36 cents a gallon. So you can, you can do your imagination. It's been more than just a couple of years ago. Then I thought, let's see. Three quarters of the campus was already gone. And the next day, my single stroke or single cylinder motorcycle was to head 440 miles north to go home. But somewhere through the afternoon and the evening, I just had an idea. It was a, a very crazy idea when you are broke. Rather than take the direct route home, I would take the indirect route home, which, to, which was to go to um, go west, young man, uh, quite some ways to Old Faithful, and then turn north and go home. Now, there was a reason that I would take that indirect route, for you see that Karen left two days before I did. And it wasn't certain that she was coming back the following year. So I thought $13.27 would be enough to take the indirect route under the guise of going to Yellowstone Park and then another 600 miles back in the opposite direction. So how does one do that when you are broke or nearly broke? It works something like this. You call her up uh, the day that you roll in town and say, hey, would you like to get together? You don't call ahead. You just show up. If she's not there, you go on your way, and that's just the way things are. As, as I spent a couple of days there in Denver, the plan was to go north into Wyoming. And you don't call ahead in those days and order up a four-star hotel. $13.27 doesn't get you one of those. After you fill the tank two or three times, you have about $4. As I roll into town, there I saw it. Road, end trail, roadside in. It, it fit right between the sidewalk and the curb. It had 100% naturally organic flooring, of which the color was green. And it was a wonderful thing as you roll out your sleeping bag you could see all of the glorious stars at night. Having bypassed the main desk, it seemed that somebody at 2 o'clock in the morning wanted, to, wanted me to register my presence. He had a, a shiny badge on his jacket, and his companion had plenty of fangs in his mouth. At two o'clock in the morning, he was sniffing to make sure I was where I should be. After we exchanged pleasantries, and he confirmed my ID for the room I was staying in, his parting remark was, you could have at least stayed in the city park. I smiled and said, thank you, I won't go anywhere. I took that to heart, mind you, as I rolled into the next town. 
For you don't find a three-star hotel in the next town either when you are what? When you are broke. Now there was four dollars in my pocket, having filled the tank one more time. Rolling into town, there it was. Covered wagon hotel. The canvas was missing, but roll out the sleeping bag and the starry sky was wonderful. Until the wind started blowing about 40 miles an hour and it was about 40 degrees. It got to be very cold very quickly. I looked around and I said there has to be some place that I can stay when you are broke. There I saw it, just a block away. It was cardboard box motel. <laughs> Roll out the sleeping bag and had a glorious night, only to be interrupted by the person that needed the container at five o'clock in the morning. He was yelling, where is that trash box? Coming scurrying out of that room, private room I was enjoying. I said, he said, are you done with that? I said, absolutely. And went on my way. It's unusual what you do when you are broke. Have you been there? Maybe you're there now. Maybe the situation in life finds you struggling between jobs or underemployed or looking for a job and nothing seems to happen. Open your Bibles to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. We find there a story that follows Pentecost. Peter and John went up together in the, uh, to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look unto us. And he gave them heed, and he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold I have what? I have none. I'm paraphrasing. I am broke. But then he goes on. But such as I have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. You see, when you think you're broke, you're really not. Because Jesus is with you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. There's an old saying in business, until something is sold, nothing happens. You've heard that saying, haven't you? You haven't. Some of you have. Let me suggest that in Christianity, nothing happens until somebody gives. And this is a story about not being broke, but it's a story about giving. Because you see, God's Spirit takes that which we commit. God's Spirit takes that which we give, and God's Spirit blesses it because it's not in our power to do extraordinary things. It's not in our power to carry out things. It's not in our power 
to be great. It's in our power to give back to God that which He has given to us. And He has given to us the power and authority of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that regardless of where we find ourselves, regardless of how great the need exceeds our ability to meet it, regardless of the situation, that we can face that situation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that that situation will be blessed, that that need will be met, and God's Spirit will be poured out in ways that we don't anticipate. Do you think that that man was expecting to be healed? He was hoping to get a few coins. He was hoping to be rich for a little bit. He was hoping to be blessed. And God far exceeded all of his expectations. Do you find them in your life today? People around you, in your neighborhood, on the job, looking for something better, looking for a life that is blessed, looking for hope, looking for peace. Do you find them? Do you see them? Looking for something other than the good things and the great things that God can give them. They're there wanting your help. And we may be broke to supply their needs from all outward expectations. But in the name of Jesus, as we go to them and introduce them to Jesus, Jesus does great things and not only meets the need, far exceeds the need. The Bible says, And he took him by night, by the right hand, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. I would have loved to have been there. Wouldn't have you? It was an amazing thing on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 people were converted and they heard the message in their own language. And that message penetrated their hearts, and they gave their hearts to Jesus. I believe this was as great and or greater experience. Because somebody coming expecting one thing received the most important thing, being the Lord Jesus Christ's blessing. And I believe, friends, that God's arm is not short today, that in the name of Jesus, as we have asked Christ into our hearts, and we go forward into the workplace, as we come to people, when they present their needs, that we can extend and try to meet their physical needs, but go deeper than that, and try to meet the soul needs of the empty hearts, and the pain that they may be feeling. They were, fun, they, they were filled, verse 10 says, they were filled with wonder and amazement. As the lame which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran unto them in the porch which is called Solomon's, uh, called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Peter saw it and he answered unto the people, you men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? And why do you look so earnestly upon us? As though by our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. And then he takes and he cuts them right to the quick. He takes them back to the history, how they had turned their backs on God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified, his son, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead. Wherefore, you are witnesses. How could it be that the goodness and grace of God was being extended yet to these people? They had opportunity. 
They had opportunity on the cross to acknowledge Christ. And they, they chose Barabbas rather than Christ. Broke, the disciples were. Broken, the lame man was. But as both came in contact with Christ, the broke, uh, the broke was filled with the power of God in the name of Jesus. And the broken was healed. So how is it today? Does God want His people to be filled with the Spirit of God and in the name of Jesus? Go forth from this place that there will be power manifested in their life in such a way that people will say, tell me, I see there's a difference in you today. Something's different about you. You're not quite as sharp and angry as you were last week. What's happened? Who have you met? What's the difference in His name through faith? We receive power from the throne of grace. In His name through faith, we are made strong. And in His name through faith, I believe we find at least four things. They're found in the closing verses of Acts chapter 3. These four things we'll just touch on very briefly. By those things which God before had showed by the mouth of His prophets that Christ should suffer, hath He so fulfilled. And these four things. Repent, the Scripture says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So the first thing that happens when the presence of God comes in, comes into the life of a person is a sense of sinfulness. For verse 19 says, repent thereof. When we, when we are in the presence of God, Many times we say, how can we come into the very presence of God? How can a sinner such as I stand in the presence of God? And it drives us to our knees. And we say, Lord, I'm unworthy to be in your presence. But in the name of Jesus, through his death on the cross, I come humbly. We repent. And then we are converted. We repent and we are reconciled to Christ that our sins may be blotted out, that there might be a time the repentance, the reconciliation is followed by a time of refreshing, the scripture says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Do you like that kind of, uh, that kind of regularity that comes into a person's life when they come to God through the name of Jesus? There's the repentance, I'm glad for that. There's the reconciliation. I'm so glad that Jesus allows that on the cross. There's the refreshing that comes as we realize that in the name of Jesus, there's a power that's stronger than anything that we have in and of ourselves. Because it is at the name of Jesus that the devil flees. It is at the name of Jesus that temptation is overcome. It is at the name of Jesus that our Weakness is made strong through Jesus. It is at the name of Jesus that the meek become bold. It is at the name of Jesus that the broken are healed. It is at the name of Jesus that we go forward not to be conquered, but to be conquerors. Can't wait for that day. How about you, friends? Can't wait for that day. How about you, friends? Can't wait for that day. How about you, friends? It's in the name of Jesus that you have that power. Not someday in the future. Not something that happened in the past. But today is the day that the name of Jesus lives in your life and my life today because it's at the name of Jesus and through His death on the cross that the Spirit is poured out. It's at the name of Jesus. It's at the name of Jesus. It's not because of our self-help. It's not because of our gritting of teeth. It's not because we say the promises 
over and over. It's because Jesus lives and he wants to fill us with his spirit and his power. There is no power through my name. I looked up. I, I did a brief. Google is wonderful, isn't it? You can find anything out in 0 .5, 0 .0005 seconds. And in three minutes, you can have way more information than you'll ever use for three days. So I typed in different people like different names. I typed in. I remember reading one time a hundred of the most powerful names uh, in history. It returned sort of an interesting, uh, interesting result. I won't read you all 100. I'll just give you the top 10 in reverse order. So number 10, uh, they did it through an analytical search. Who has accomplished the most in their life? Who's most often to be remembered several hundred years? So those were the criteria, not just who's the most popular now, who has the most likes on the web, who, who has uh, the most favorite places. Thomas Jefferson was number 10. Of course, you knew that Alexander the Great was number 9. And Aristotle is number 8. Number eight. Most of you would not guess that Adolf Hitler was number 7. George Washington was number 6. Abraham Lincoln was number 5. William Shakespeare was number four. Number three was Muhammad. Number two was Napoleon. And who do you think number one was? Even the secular mind recognizes the name of Jesus. The greatest influence through all time there, there may be power for some in the name of Napoleon. There may be power for some in the name of whatever name you want to use. But if you want to have the power from the throne of God, it's in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that, friends? Do you believe that, friends? Do you live that, friends? Do you share that, friends? For you see, the day of Pentecost was a day of 3,000 being converted. But the day of Pentecost was an illustration of being broke and going somewhere, and before anything happened, somebody had to what? What? Give! Before anything happened, somebody had to give! God could appear in the skies today and verbally tell everybody to get ready. But he chose and chooses to work through you and through me. For you see, there are thousands waiting for somebody to share with them, to give, to share with them the name of Jesus, to give to them the hope that you have in your heart to share that Jesus is Lord, that they might be reconciled and that they might have a relationship with Christ. Oh, friends, he's waiting for us to do that, that the broken might be made whole in the name of Jesus. And the last piece of Acts chapter 3, the last lesson that we learn, is found in verse 25. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant, which God made with our fathers. The covenant, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds, kindreds of the earth be what? Be blessed. Unto you first, having raised up by his son, sent him sent his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So all of the pieces of reconciliation, all of the pieces of repentance, forgiveness, reconciliation, God wants you to know the greatest thing that he wants to do is to bless you today. The greatest thing he wants to do 
is to bless you today. In the name of Jesus, He wants to pour out His blessings upon you. In the name of Jesus, in your loneliest hour, He wants you to know that He's with you. In your brokest of broke times, He wants you to know He's the God of provision. When you're broken down physically, He wants you to know He's the God of healing. He wants you to know there's no place you can go, but that He's not there already. And if you forget everything else, remember this from today's message. The completeness of God's power is found in the name of Jesus. So go forth. Go forth with that full assurance. Go forth with that full expectation. Go forth with that full power. Go forth with that full acknowledgement that it's not about us. It's about glorifying Christ. It's not about what He's accomplishing through us, but it's opening our lives that we might give to others that which we have received that they too might be blessed and call upon the name of Jesus and confess that He is Lord of Lords. I believe, friends, Acts chapter 3 is written for us today because I believe there's another chapter that's being recorded in heaven just now. It's called Acts 2016. And there's a chapter with your name on it. And there are passages and verses with your life written in that book. In the name of Jesus, we go forth to proclaim His glory and share and give to others. May God bless us as we do so. Let us pray. Gracious Father, through this past week, the busyness of life has pressed in. As we look forward, Father, to another week, we see the challenges that are set before us. And we realize that there are those challenge which, challenges which far exceed our human abilities to meet. There are people that need encouragement. There are people that need their physical needs met. There are people that are broken physically, spiritually, psychologically. And Father, while we can come alongside and bear their burdens, we lift them up to you, Father, with a full realization that we can't meet their needs. We won't sit idly by, Father, and say, no, we can't help them. No, we can help them. We can come alongside, speak the word of encouragement, put our arms around them, share with them some love with flesh attached to it. Share with them what the Spirit has done and is doing in our lives. And share with them the assurance that in the name of Jesus, they too can experience wholeness, hope, peace, healing, repentance, and restoration. So, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will take hold of each one of us, that you will shake us from our complacency, that you will fill us with your Spirit, that we can do nothing other than to go forth from this place and touch and move lives for your glory's sake and your honor. Bless us, Father, with your Spirit. We ask in the name of Jesus, amen.